Shields Ambassador. Pretty cool horn. Done up by Jay Landris. I got this from a local guy here in Lockport, New York. I'm using a, uh, an Austin Custom Brass 1.25 CS FX mouthpiece. If you don't have one of these, definitely get one. I have two. <laughs> this, uh, this horn's pretty old. I think this is from like the 60s, 70s maybe. But man, listen to that. Super great compression, so whatever they did to this thing over there, did a great job. I haven't seen any that really look like this. You know, it's got the thumb, the, the uh, thumb ring. They definitely changed out. I mean, if you look at it this way, they have the offset tuning slides there, you know, the first and third valve slides. They put the amount of water keys on it. That's pretty badass. I think everything else is original, other than uh, the lead pipe was. Uh, this is a Bach 43 lead pop lead pipe. Uh, and it's a reverse lead. You can see that here with the oversleeve on the lead pipe. So that's pretty cool. I, I guess that's, you know, from a trumpet perspective, I'm just a noodler, you know, I'm a student kind of a guy. But uh, I guess this plays more freely or there's less resistance. I don't know. I'm not a good enough player where I can tell the difference, but I think it sounds great. It looks cool. It's got like original, like natural raw brass. It's not been scratched or sanded. It just has no lacquer on it at all. So it's got a lot of nice character to it. A lot of wear spots on it. I really enjoy this horn quite a bit. My number two. Of course, my uh, RBT is the number one, but this is a really nice horn. I dig it a lot. Oh, and it has the stops on the bottom too. I don't know if you can see that here. So it's like the Yamaha style and here. I don't know why you, I mean, honestly, this, the, the first valve on this thing slides so nicely that I do use it from time to time and it's enough where I can get a, a, a D in tune and it's a little less uh, movement than my third. So it keeps, uh, it helps to keep the embouchure tighter for me when I play. But yeah, this is a really cool horn. I really like this one a lot. It's, uh, I guess it's a Franken horn, but it's hard to say, see, but you, it's definitely an old ambassador. Fullerton, California. Pretty cool horn. I like it a lot. Yeah, so I picked that horn up for like, I think it was 600 bucks. Great horn. I don't know what the, uh, what people consider the Olds Ambassador model. I don't see them going for very much online, but with what was done to that horn, I think I got a great deal. So kids out there, anybody starting, want to pick up trumpet? Even grown-ups, like, you know, 21 Pilots type dudes. You can buy a great trumpet for not a lot of money. I mean, some of the prices out there, let's be honest, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> I mean, three, four thousand dollars for a, a just a regular old trumpet. I mean, I'm not trying to discredit anything like, you know, Bach or Yamaha. I'm, they're all wonderful horns, but wow, that's a lot of money. I mean, you can get a custom horn, like my nice custom RBT. Made to my specs. Well, not really, but... You know, we did a lot of cool customization to the, the base model at uh, Raw Brass Trumpets, and uh, you know, this is a Benzina, but <clears throat> I got some cool little valve caps on there. I mean, you put the gigantic finger rings. I mean, those are monsters. <laughs> this horn is really just a dream. I like the big bracing here, but it's not intrusive throughout the rest of the horn. It weighs quite a bit. It's got a giant, I think this is at least a five and an eighth inch bell. Really nice trumpet. Got my name on it. See that? Can you see it? Garrett. That's cool. I've been really digging this uh, pudgy mouthpiece I got. This is the, uh, uh, it's a, one of their deep V cups. I'm not sure which one it is. The biggest one and the last one that he had left. But I really, you know, I like that real deep V cup mouthpiece. It gives a real nice fat sound. And for whatever reason, when I play a shallow cup, even like a C, which it's not really a shallow cup. Um, I don't know. I just sound better and, and play better on a deep cup. It definitely limits my range to, I mean, honestly, high C is about it. And these things get a little flat when you get up there. But if you listen to any of my tunes, I don't really play a lot of high end or high note trumpet. I play a lot of ballads or smooth jazz, I guess you want to call it. Chill hop. That's my thing. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I am actually just a beats producer. <laughs> My wife yells at me all the time. She's like, you know, because we have a couple daughters that are wonderful singers. And every time I try to write a, a song, a song for them, you know, I'm really a beats producer, man. 
I read two, three minute jams that are just pretty much based off a, a, a single idea. Uh, and then I write a melody for the horn, or you know, sometimes I sing too, but I'm not really a songwriter. I'm a beats producer, and I'm owning that, and I'm proud of that. I think that's cool. I dig it. You know, I uh, signed up recently with uh, Dashgo as a distributor, and uh, man, they're killing it. I mean, they're starting to grow on Spotify too, but they really have an Apple Apple Music presence, and uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I've never really had much of a fa of a following at all, and what I did notice about Apple Music is they're definitely more engaged in uh, the musician or the artist, I guess, if you will, or the, the producer, whatever I am. Because <clears throat> I noticed that as soon as I got plays, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know, I got a, a couple songs, and I think one of them's three, three weeks old. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it's four weeks at this point. Maybe it's been out a month. It's got a little over fifty thousand plays on Apple Music, but uh, what I noticed was that as that song, you know, started cranking up, every other song I have went up. Not to that extent, of course, so I'm not getting five, 6,000 plays a day from other songs, but I had songs that had like, you know, 25 plays a day are now at 500. So the point is that uh, I think on Apple Music, people, maybe they're more music fans, so they, they actually listen to a song and then they'll go check out the artist, where what I found on Spotify with the, uh, I think I'm just, going just a little bit over six million plays there now um if if it's not on a big playlist it does almost nothing and that's i mean i i'm not knocking spotify at all i, I mean i love spotify they're amazing but that particular platform doesn't lend itself well to at least for me i have not been able to organically really grow very much there despite having shit loads of streams People just listen to the streams and off they go. Um, I've had like dozens of Shazams on Apple Music. I've had a lot of stuff since uh, teaming up with Dashgo and, you know, obviously being on some of their big playlists is helping. But, you know, like I said, I have over 6 million plays on Spotify um, and like 800 followers. Uh, and on Apple Music, I have a fraction of that, but I'm seeing a much more rapid incremental growth uh, organically from people that actually like the songs so that's really that's cool because as a musician you know or an artist or a producer whatever we are it's really nice to make music but it's it's even better when people appreciate it and like it right because otherwise why put it out if you just were satisfied with recording the music and then listening to it which i definitely do that i'm like i say i'm my own biggest fan but you know, I want other people to like it too. I, I really want to express myself and have people check it out and see what they think. And, you know, at this point in my life, it's, it has nothing to do with money or anything like that anymore. Um, it's just really that accomplishment and that achievement and the satisfaction um, of being able to continually put music out that people want to listen to and they do listen to. Um, so that really does involve organic growth and, and getting in touch with fans. And despite taking out ads and doing lots of promotion and all that kind of stuff, you know, I guess the platform does make a big difference and there is some some real value to the uh, the whole Apple Music scene. Uh, and I'm very fortunate and, and thankful to be a part of that at this point uh, where it's actually doing something now. And I hope that continues to grow. Um, you know, now saying that, I know there's a big shift uh, in the industry with the, uh, the recent change from Joe Rogan moving over to uh, Spotify at some point off of YouTube and all the other platforms. So... Maybe that'll change Spotify. Maybe that'll, I, I don't know. I, I have mixed mixed emotions on that. I think it's great for Spotify. I hope they, they get all the success that they deserve. But at the same time, when, when you start to see that kind of shift, you know, there, there's always things moving around in the background that, you know, Spotify has been an awesome entry point for indie artists like myself. Um, you know, I would hate to see that that change because they, they started going in a different direction um, you know, as, as I've been in, you know, the technology industry for a long, long time, almost 20 years now. And, you know, there's a lot to be said for working for a, a giant like, you know, Google, Facebook. I worked for Yahoo for a number of years. Um, awesome experience. But, you know, with size comes uh, a lot of compromise <laughs> without question. So a lot of benefits, a lot of perks, a lot of cool stuff. But there's a cost to all that. Uh, and that could be the same thing with Spotify, where they start signing some big acts. They get 
further in bed and under the covers with, with bigger labels and or the labels. Uh, and the opportunities for people like me just start to disappear. And I, I sincerely hope that's not at all the case. Um, but, you know, it's nothing that they would be doing intentionally. It's just business. They're trying to make money just like any other business. And they have to make decisions based on, you know, investors and shareholder values and, and all that kind of stuff that has very little to do with the mass of people, but a lot to do with a very small number of people. Um, and I understand that, you know, no, no worries there. But uh, so anyway, I'm trying, I've been trying to grow on a different platform uh, for quite a while and, you know, being able to have some success uh, on, on Apple Music. Uh, big shout out to Dashko and uh, Rod. Everybody that knows uh, Dashko definitely knows Rod. <laughs> really nice guy. Uh, very California guy. I enjoy talking to him. We talk on the phone. That's That's cool. I like that. Um, technology is great, but it's fun to talk to people, uh, you know, live and in person. That's, that's fun as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, check it out. And, uh, if you've reached a point where you can consider, uh, submitting to Dashco, they have some minimum criteria with regard to what they can do from a promotional and, uh, a support perspective. You have to have reached a certain level, um, but it's not unachievable and you should be able to come to the table with something if uh, a company or an organization is going to get behind you and, and push you further. So I think that makes a lot of sense uh, for them to have, uh, you know, a minimum criteria for you to, uh, I mean, anybody can release there. Uh, it's just to get the uh, the label services and, and some of the promotional features that they offer. Um, you have to be at a certain level. I mean, that makes sense, right? If you're a strong performer, you're going to get uh, a different level of consideration than if if you're just still trying to grow to that point. So fortunately I've reached that point and uh, time was on my side. I reached out a couple times actually, and then uh, we got in touch and uh, turns out Rod actually likes what I'm doing. So that's never a bad thing uh, to have a fan on your side in that respect as well, at least. <clears throat> and he has absolutely in every possible way proven uh, what he said he would do uh, thus far. So I'm very happy and I'm very appreciative. So. Again, shout out to Dashko, and uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing a couple of my horns and uh, see more of you horn players and, and jazzers out there in the, uh, <laughs> the lo-fi, chill-hop, jazz-hop universe. I think it's uh, starting to grow now. I mean, that's, that, that's a genre that's been around for a while, but uh, you know, I think maybe uh, the industry's taking a little bit more notice, uh, where it's it's been around long enough now that it, it's not just a passing fad. It's tough with electronic music. I mean, I understand it has roots in hip hop and jazz, but ultimately it's electronic, right? Uh, for the most part. I mean, I, I happen to play a lot of the instruments, but I'm still using beat makers and, and samples and things like that to uh, create the underlying, uh, you know, the, the beat and the music that I'm playing on. But, uh, you know, it's 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 such a segmented genre and just electronica in general. I mean, there's like so many subgenres. It's very difficult to keep track. And when things get that segregated, it's fine, but you get a very distinct line. And a lot of people don't cross those lines like they like one thing and that's it. Uh, so it it can sort of be a, a difficult thing from a business perspective or, you know, as a label, let's say to want to hedge a bet on something that they haven't seen really flesh itself out and prove that it's worth spending any money promoting and working on. Because truly those companies are simply, they're just businesses. They're, they're I'm sure, music lovers and, and that, but it's no different than uh, the business I'm in from a technological perspective. It's not, uh, you know, I have certainly passions and, and desires to use certain companies and technologies in, in uh, the workflows that I design and architect and manage. Uh, but bottom line comes down to a lot of other factors, not just that I like it. it needs to be production ready, it needs to be robust, it needs to have community support. There's all that stuff involved, just like there would be for music. So really the music business, when you really dissect it like that, is not different uh, in, in many ways from traditional business models, uh, except for the fact that uh, I guess you get a, a much more diverse, uh, I would argue, a diverse group of people uh, and you can absolutely come from ground zero and be top of the charts, you know, like that. Whereas, you know, I've been working for the last 15 to 20 years to, you know, reach the point that I have in technology. Um, and that's just the process. So, <clears throat> 
it's a different industry in that way. Uh, but it's really, uh, from a business model, it's really not that much different in my opinion at this point. The more I look at it uh, and the more I compare it to businesses that I manage now and run now and have in the past, it's not really that different overall. It's uh, it's it's something you have to, you know, reach a, a maturity level and an experience level to, uh, you know, and some people can reach that at 18. It doesn't mean you have to be old. Uh, you just have to have the mindset to understand what it really is and why the decisions that are made are made. And that a lot of times, as with other businesses, it's a fluke. It's just, you know, the stars aligned and things just worked out. And that's that was the result. So all you can do is hope you're on the end of one of those uh, at some point in your career and it, it happens for you.